Folks, this is the best show on Blog Talk and the best show on the internet. Shut up! Nobody, and I mean nobody, tackles issues like inflammatory talk. Shut up! And Mr. Midnight Movie. Shut up! And Jewish producer. Hello, son! Shut up! We tackle the things that nobody, nobody tackles. Hello, son! Demand answers. Hello, son! Stop walking on eggshells. Shut up! Hello, son. Goofy Bone can get off his bloviated fat enchilada ass and start talking about La Raza. Hello, son. Oh, jacking it. Pink Daddy Joe Pete. Oh, jacking it. Pink Daddy Joe Pete. Whipping the skippy all day long, all day long. We're making a movie about white guilt. We're going to examine all these facts. Shut up. The civil rights movement today basically uh, protects criminals. Okay, stop interrupting me. We're making a movie about white guilt. Okay, stop interrupting me. Shut up. We're making a movie about white guilt. Done in a beautiful fashion. The documentary, at the same time, both prose and poetry. It's not the noble movement that it was. I'm above you on all these issues. I've been to the military. I have served in the capacity to protect your rights to bloviate. To protect your rights to bloviate. Who are you to tell me what my style is, you meth addict? I've been to the military. How do you know I'm a meth addict? I'm above you on all these issues. How do you know I'm a mess addict? You haven't served in the military. In fact, you wouldn't be fit for the military. I'm a racist, and I don't consider myself an especially evil person. What's this got to do with the price of rice in China? Well, I'm just telling you, I'm a better man than you are. You're a narcissist. We've established that. Okay, stop interrupting me. You could not defend the very rights you enjoy. You are the ultimate invalid, 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 invalid. I put stock in you. I don't know. One of the revolutions is not a heavy daily show. What's this got to do with the price of rice in China? Money. I'm into aviation. Money. Power. Money. Power. Man boobs. Shut up. I see why Sick the Tank uh, daddies kicked his ass and kicked him out of the house early on. Man boobs. Shut up. I'm going to talk over you as loud as I can. I've got my speaker full blast to blow you away. Shut up. Mr. Midnight Movie. My name is Delano. I have killed Mr. Midnight Movie. I stabbed that son of a bitch. This is money. Power. Money. Power. Tired. Money. Power. Money. Power. Money. I don't see anyone in here. I don't know what the hell's going on, JP. Maybe they need Is another it? ten minutes just to get yes. ready. You are listening just to, wipe to an butts. episode of inflammatory talk. What do you say yes, about I'm that? The, I am the host, the inflammatory but diplomatic Mr. Midnight Movie, and the equally inflammatory Jewish producer. Hello. I have to have yes. a Ricola in my mouth because my throat hurts. Yes, yes. So, yes. It it looks like censorship is winning. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, no and doubt. it's winning. I mean, I you know, I I just find that hard to believe how big censorship is winning. Well. Some of my favorite shows are now, they've either been kicked off of YouTube or at least had a couple strikes thrown against them. And some of them had three strikes and got their shows disconnected. And then um, after some time, YouTube reinstated their show. Uh, there's all kinds of nonsense, but that's just YouTube. That doesn't even touch on mainstream media which doesn't even allow for opposing views anymore how sad is that you yes get, you get their view and that's the end of the discussion go look at fox's news if you don't like what cnn is saying if you don't like what they're saying go uh watch um i don't know who, who else is good uh the young turks if you don't like the young turks uh, go find Bill O'Reilly jacking off in the bathroom. You're gonna find something, and uh, and you're, but you're not gonna be able to discuss it. You're not gonna be able to argue it with them. You're just gonna have to jump from news site to news site. Yes. So the presidential candidate is uh, is heating up. 
Uh, we'll go into more of this detail, I think, around the 31st or so. Oh, yeah. Uh, but there's uh, there's already a, a Republican, Bill Weld. And, and does it really is, matter? I mean, let's look at Trump. Um, if Trump doesn't show you something very important about our political process, nothing does. Donald Trump won. I mean, uh, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. And uh, the Electoral College said, uh, fuck you, people. We want Trump. Trump's our guy. Absolutely. So Trump. And uh, the one thing that the Democrats, uh, I mean, because, you know, there are like, I don't know how many people. There's, I think, over 20 people in the Democratic um, candidacy. And, uh, I mean, it just... It, it, it's like the, the field is so wild that people are just grasping at anything. So uh, they're talking about getting rid of the uh, the Electoral College, which uh, I don't agree with, by the way. I just think it's – even when um, – As long as that's in if, place, there it, there is – we're going to get what we're given. We're, we're not going to be able to vote anyone in. They may They may win the popular vote, but that's by design, and, and that's all there is to it. We just don't have a say, and I have a feeling it's been like that since the beginning. I don't know. I, you know, that's just all, all I know. All I know is that uh, everybody was thinking that Hillary was going to win. I mean, it was a surprise to me that Trump uh, won the election. So now I think, I think that uh, you know, I, I think that uh, YouTube and uh, and all of the other social media sites. They want a democratic victory, and one of the things that they're doing is they're censoring because they don't want uh, any questions to get out there. Because you know Joe Biden, who's the front runner in the Democratic Party, is basically he's uh, running on uh, you know Charleston, uh, that whole thing that happened there with uh, the Confederate flag and the guy driving his uh, car into a group of angry protesters. Oh yeah, and that's that's how he's uh, he's running his uh, his campaign, and uh, so why don't we go? And I, I'm seeing that a gentleman by the name of Michael Bennett, they have is like I don't know if it's just alphabetized, mm -hmm. but he's no, I don't think he's so I think right now Joe Biden still tops the list. Yes, as as far as uh, candidates go, and then the rest, it's all. I mean, who's going to be, like, who's going to be is, who is going to be Biden's, basically, like, like, who's going to be, who's going to, who's, who's, who's going to take Biden's position or come in second right now at the moment? Um, and uh, I'm going to tell you right now who's, who, in my opinion, uh, is coming, who seems to be coming in, in uh, who's who's made kind of a splash, who's gotten a lot of money her way, is Tulsi Gabbard, the Democrat uh, from Hawaii. Right. Um, I haven't heard of her name. No, but you will. I mean, uh, and she's she's not as far left crazy is the rest um and uh she is she seems to be making a bit of a sla uh, splash the one who i think is going to fizzle out rather quickly is going to be kamala harris i hope so uh, yeah she, uh, she is she is monstrous and then of co course uh your uncle bernie feel the boy. bernie feel the burn Feel the burn. The millionaires and the billionaires. Hey, hey. I'm, uh, I'm not related uh, to Bernie Madoff. He made off with your money. You get it? He made off with you, your money. You, 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 you I'm just it. here to tax you. Listen, people. Listen. It's me. I ordered. Yes. I, I, uh, on Christmas Day, I ordered Chinese like all the rest of the good Jews. Yes. And uh, I want corn beef on rye. I'll have that uh, oh, with a pickle. Are you going to have a sandwich? I'm going to split it with my son here. Uh, is this a two for one? Two for one, please. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard my son, my son you know, Bernie Sanders the... ad admitted to being very cheap. By the way, yeah, my, my son always brings the coupons. Yeah, bring the coupons. 
Oh, we'll split the sandwich in half. You don't need to eat that much, people. Hey, hey Mr. Midnight That's Movie, what? did you ever have the entertainment card? The entertainment the entertainment book was the, the greatest coupon invention ever made. Where did it go? I'm going to bring it back with my election. Yes, yes we're going to bring back... We're going to bring back entertainment, uh, entertainment 2020. Now, some of these individuals I've never heard of before, like there's a guy by the name of um, Mike Gravel. And, you know, let's see. Uh, and he's, oh, you know, he is a senator from Alaska. So um, that might be, you know, because that is a red state. So, uh, you know. And then we got Bill de Blasio from New York. Yeah. Blasio. Bill de Blasio. No, my, my family's not part of any mafia. <laughs> Bill de Blasio. Right. I mean, I've never been involved with the mafia ever. I'm not in the mob. The mob's in me. <laughs> the mob's in the me. Mo the mobs and me. Hey, welcome to mobs and me, with Mr. And then Man we got Ruby. we got the great Beto Beto O'Rourke. <clears throat> Beto. Yeah. Uh, Beto. Wow, we're not even Beto. out of the bees yet. Yeah. Seth Maltrin, Malton or whatever his name. Jeez, Wayne Masson, Massim. God, Massim. we got so many. God, there's so many people running, mm. but the ones that I I know of. Are of course Joe uh, creepy creepy Joe Biden, um, angry Cory Booker. Um, you know, I guess you could say kind of stoic uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Um, angry and uh, vindictive Kamala Harris. Also, she's she, she she supports prostitution. By the way, that's the only bright spot. In uh, in her uh, in her election, and then uh, we've got uh, Beto O'Rourke, Beto, and then um, Elizabeth Pocahontas Warren. I, oh yeah, she reminds me of Debbie Daly a little bit, a little bit, yeah. a little bit. And then we got full Asian Andrew Yang. I think he is um, Yang Gang. Yeah, Yang Gang, and I wonder if he's t from Taiwan. Is it is he Chinese or Taiwan? I, I I'm just yes. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at it. Let me see Yang. Let me see. Sounds like he's probably Tai from. He's Taiwanese Chinese. Yeah. Just a guess. Ah, uh, Taiwanese heritage. Yeah. Just like half Asian guy. But he speaks, <laughs> but he speaks Mandarin. Hey, dude. I wonder if he gets the VIP. Yeah. Uh, uh. Come on, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, to guys. Hey, vote after, Yang, man. After I win. Vote yeah, Yang. Yeah, after I win, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay all of you guys <laughs> off big. We're going to the VIP room. Let's, my uh, uncle's Yang, dude. He He's my cousin, dude. Me and him are tight. He doesn't call me anymore, but, you know, me and him are real tight. <laughs> I used to know him real well, and then he said I ripped him off. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to do me a favor. I want you to put some. I want you to go over to Yang and just you know just get past the security and just say, "Hey, man, Steve says hello." Okay, hello, can you do that? Yes. Just get up on stage, man. Do it. When he's on stage, just just go up. Just go up and say, "Hey, man." Just tell him I said hi, okay? And then, you know, tell him to give me, just if you can, tell him to give me a call, okay? I need, I, I, can, I can make his t-shirts. Come on. Gang, gang. All right. Which anyway, these, that's that's which, an inside joke, by the way. Now, which of these, yeah, the little inside joke, inside baseball there. <laughs> Who's the, the, the most conservative of the bunch? I would say Tulsi Gabbard. Oh. Yeah, I would say Tulsi, um, but Yang Yang might be the next, you know, one that's kind of conservative. Biden was at one time sort of a moderate Democrat, but everyone seems to be moving to the left. Uh, you know, uh, they all want the Bernie vote. 
Because, you know, Bernie's going to make some, uh, Bernie, I think, is going to try to, I mean, everyone's going to try to out, you know, left or out Bernie or out progressive the the next one. It's going to be like, you know, it's going to be who can go the furthest, um, furthest left without going off the planet. That's what it's going to be. Feel the boin. Feel the burn. Let's see here. See if we can add a person here if they have any comments about who's running. Probably not going to answer the phone. Oh, let's see. And there's all kinds of drama going on Spreaker and on uh, on Spreaker. I don't know if it's good fun or if it's really angry. Jeez, Sing woman. It would be nice My to fo- a, a real opinion about what's really going on, because I I'm like you. I I chime in every once in a while, but by the time I yes. get there, all the damage has already been done. I think. Is, uh, is, 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 is there a secret caller? Oh, wait, is she on already? I see she's on the... She... I... Are you, are you in a, are you in a, hello, yes. are you in a restaurant right now? Did you order me um, anything? You sound a little bit preoccupied. I'm are you at working. the gym? You're working, what are you, working at a strip club? Um... I want the off the menu items, please. <laughs> yes. A- animal, titties for dinner. Animal style. Uh, add pickles and mustard on mine. <laughs> what are you guys Bad. doing? Doing a show? Well, we're doing a show called the Buffoon News Network. Buffoon oh, nice. News Network. Nice. Are you guys wearing? Are you guys wearing clothes? No. Well, no. Oh, oh hell no. Yeah, that's really the only so, way to do it. So, who do you think is gonna gonna challenge uh, President President Trump? Trump, uh, for Biden. the pre- you think it's going to be Biden. Yeah. You don't think uh, uh, old Bernie's going to going to get in there and uh, you know nope. uh, out left? Nope, they're going to go with Biden because he's trying to portray himself as the most moderate, um, even though he's not. Uh, but they're they're, they're going to run with him because it's the safest bet. He's the least ultra. Leftist that they had, at least progressive leftist that they have. What do you think of Tulsi? What do you think of Tulsi Gabbard? I I don't know. I reminds me a little bit. I don't know much about her, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. They're gonna they're gonna choose Biden. Reminds me a little bit too much of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and bathtub girl. So I'm I'm no on Tulsi. I I, 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 I would certainly prefer. I would, (laughs) I would certainly prefer. Uh, uh, her. I mean, Biden over Kamala Harris. You know. Well, yeah, me, Kamala Harris is doing terrible in the polls right now, and um, we're not surprised by any of that. Um, Cory Booker's not doing great in the polls. Um, I, I, I Biden's going to be her man. Yeah. But and Biden. Question- is you know he can't even really speak on, but that's going to be their 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 best card that they have is going to be Biden and I highly doubt he'll um, he'll get elected so now the question is is who's going to be who's who's going to who is going to be Biden's uh, uh, like who's going to be Biden's biggest competition in the Democratic primary who's going to be that front runner that gives Biden a difficult uh, that that gives Biden a a difficult time probably beat it or work (laughs) <laughs> um, you know I don't know. The thing is, is that the that whole party, they're like super progressive left wing candidates. They love them, but they know they're not going to win. So what they need is essentially a front boy that's going to do what he's told, but appear moderate. So Biden is really their guy and probably the best chance against Trump, I think. But I mean, I, I I don't know. Bernie Sanders, nah. You know, he um he made some comments about making money off a book, like capitalist comments. 
off making money off a book and things kind of went south for him um, after that and I don't know I don't know I don't think it looks tight I think they're gonna go with fighting because he thinks they think he's safe but they don't really have any good um well I mean they know they have they have quite a few almost I think close to 20 if not more than 20 people in the race and the two people that I am looking for that will give Biden the runs uh, is going to be Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii and uh, Andrew Yang. Uh, I don't think so. I think the the one from Minnesota. I think she's she's their best bet. If they wanted to win, she's their best bet. Oh. Um, is that Amy? Is that is that the other woman, Amy? Uh, let me see here. Yeah, are you talking about Amy uh, College? Cole Betcher or Cole, I can't yeah, even say she's their best bet because she has well. First of all, she's from Minnesota, but she has that she has the the ability to win over the Midwest um, and a lot of those states, and they're not paying any attention to her whatsoever. She is actually like very moderate for the Democrats, um, but she's if they wanted to win, they would pick her. But she's not. Uh, left wing enough for them, so I, I don't think she'll be the front runner for them. But if they wanted to win, they should go with a candidate like her. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, Tulsi, Tulsi Gabbard seems pretty moderate as well, and she From seems Hawaii? pretty. Yeah, yeah. and Hawaii is a very li- Hawaii is a very liberal state, but uh, you know, yeah. I mean, when I've heard her talk and stuff, and she's she's um, she's made the most money, right? I mean, like she's uh, this. This month, she's gotten the most amount of money for her candidacy. Yeah, so. the, the, the problem is is that what's going to ruin it for her is that Hawaii does all this dumb stuff when it comes to challenging federal, um, so federal, regulation, federal regulation or federal laws. Like, it's always being challenged. Like the immigration bill, they challenged it from Hawaii. You know, yeah. they, you know and they're always putting a wrench in everyone's upset. I don't think they could put out a candidate out there that the rest of the United States is going to go, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's have them run the country. You might be right. Now, right now, the stock market took a dump. So do you think we may be headed for a recession? Because if, if, if there is a recession, it will hurt. Uh, um, it will hurt. Uh, Let me ask you Trump's this. Changes. Have yeah. you been to the mall lately? Uh, people are out there shopping. I don't see any problem right now i don't see any problems f- no. no problem with our with our economy well, more people, people are buying are, people so are many buying. people are There's working they're spending and they're doing just fine yeah the reason why the economy is is or the you know the the stock market is volatile right now is because of the china trade deal mainly also it's mainly. summertime and it always everything slows down in the summertime uh, it, it picks up again just at the beginning of summer i think it picks up again later in the summer but you know what this it, is just it was it was due for a correction anyway you've got to yeah. watch i don't know the, the, this is an awful correction <laughs> we had the correction how bad is how bad is it if you, i am i haven't it's been it, like so. non-stop red for for like a week straight it's just been right going but we like where's the dow at I don't know, but it's just, uh, you know, I'm just watching my stocks. I don't, the overall stock, you know, I don't know pers- what the number yeah, is. Yeah, um, it, it'll, it'll go back up. I, it will go down in summer. It will go back up. And they'll they'll come to a deal, uh, the U.S. and China, over the tariff thing, and everything will be fine and, and la dee dandy I would have gone into these extreme spikes in the stock market with a lot of criticism anyway. Um, and being very standoffish with it, and I would have invested very smartly. More smartly, that's not even a word. I would have invested intelligently, knowing that that's, you know, usually if it's too good to be true, it is. Um, and, um, you know, there, I would have taken any, any profits I would have made off the stock, stock market and put it into saved, you know, safe money making funds and, and portfolios and stocks and things like that. So, um, without you know losing pretty much on your ass, and um, I think we're still up from where Trump began back like in 2017. It was only two years, years ago. So, you know, at the end of the day, even though the market is volatile, it's um, still doing really well. Now, Debbie, I mean, uh, 
W- will you be seeing uh, Godzilla King of Monsters comes out this week? Will you be seeing it, or will that be a miss for you? Uh, I think her How name many... is Liz. <laughs> what, what, what number does this make? Like the million? No. Yeah. I'm going to go see that this weekend. Why? Are you looking for a date? Maybe. Well, and also <laughs> Rocket Man. Rocket Man's coming out. The Elton John movie? Yeah, that yeah. Looks Are you awful. gonna go see that? I don't know. Ballbuster, the Ballbuster movie's coming out here in like a month. Um, I can't wait for the new Tarantino film. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking forward to as well. Quentin Tarantino got baited into some um, political stuff the other day, and he pretty much just kind of shook his head at it and told everyone to screw off. <laughs> Good. He had a movie, and um, it was about. Or he's a movie coming out, and it's about. Um, well, it's about remember. the man. I mean, well, it takes place during the time of the Manson murders, and uh, the uh, the person in it, he's next door neighbor to uh, Roman Polanski. So and Sharon uh, Tate. Yeah, Sharon, so Sharon Tate. Tate. That's right. So they, um, he was getting some flack in an interview. Um, about not giving her, the actress who plays Sharon Tate, enough speaking roles. And they tried to allude during this questioning that it was because she was a woman. And he just, he, like, listened to the question, and he goes, I'm, I don't recognize your question. <laughs> and then the actress who plays Sharon Tate in the movie um, just stood right behind him and going, uh, there's other ways to express yourself and... You don't have to have speaking, you know, necessarily. You don't have to talk to make your value known in a movie um, and things like that. But they tried to, they tried to um, bait him in uh, sexist fashion. It's very strange. Well, they said that she wasn't given that much, that she was not uh, given that much dialogue in the movie. Like, she's not, uh, her parts, uh, you know, not that, not that large. And she doesn't say very much in the film. That's yeah. what I've heard. So they tried to say that he was sexist because of it. Yeah, just, I know. It's a news story every day. Yeah. And he said that, no, that's not the case. But Quentin Tarantino himself in that interview was like, that is uh, pretty much essentially said in so little words that that's the stupidest fucking thing. I don't know. Does he have any movies with females uh, as the, the standout lead actress? I don't even know. Kill Bill, maybe? Hey, Was that his? But, but, by the way, uh, ha- now you were probably a, a little child when this came out. Have you seen uh, Have you seen the movie uh, Aladdin yet? I have not. Um, I I loved that movie growing up. Um, I'm, I will go see it because, um, you know, Will Smith, I'll give him a chance. But it's just, it's really hard to, to really want to go see it considering Robin Williams did such a phenomenal job in his role there. And even if he didn't do a phenomenal job, he was kind of the original one, you know, the original yeah. genie. And, um, and so it's, I've, I've been kind of avoiding seeing it, but I should because it's not Will Smith's fault that Robin Williams is an amazing job and anything side to that's going to suck. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, and it's gotten, you know, both Godzilla and uh, and Aladdin have gotten horrible, horrible reviews. By the way, yeah, they, I, 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 I'm not surprised. But I, I mean, did it get horrible reviews because it was horrible, or because the bar was set differently in the original, and Robin Williams is dead? Oh, yeah. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta well, put my bra on. Hold on one second. No. Oh, take it off, god damn it. All right. So, I'm looking at films coming out here. One of them is called The Last Black Man in San Francisco, and it's just it's just another thing about uh what they call gentrification. And I find that kind of shitty just due to the fact that uh people of European descent are known as the face of gentrification. Blacks are known as the face of diversity. It's really unfair. And boy, I'm hearing the hustle and bustle of the crowd. Whatever they're selling. 
I don't know. We have some issues going on in California right now with racial discrimination, but on not uh, not the way you think. Really? Well, I mean, California sucks. I mean, California's become a California's become a dump. Uh, LA is a dump. San Francisco is a dump, and uh, it's just uh, rents are a- astronomical, and. Um, yeah, it's just uh, a lot of leftist nonsense out there, and just uh, really awful. And well, it's... what happened up here in good old Sacramento, California? My son is um, getting ready to graduate eighth grade. Mm-hmm. He's going to be in high school next year, and uh, he has a black friend at school who literally um, the other day had um, three adult men wearing ankle monitors. Uh, come to the school. I guess their little brother's in seventh grade and doesn't like this kid because he's black. He's been bullying him for about three years. And uh, these three adult men came onto campus after school wearing ankle monitors and kicked his ass. Really? 19 to 21 years old. Wearing yeah. ankle monitors. So these were people that were in prison, like they were uh, people yeah. already in jail. Yeah. They? <laughs> yeah, they were clearly... Not the best of people, anyway. But um, the fact that that happened in Sacramento, California, that was a little, a little nerve wracking. You know, kind of expect some things um, here and there, and when you're not in the city. No, but, uh, you're right on that. But uh, yeah, I mean, the thing is, LA. I mean, California turned left. The, the LA riots were the first thing where all the work a lot of the working class people the middle class people started to leave and then after prop 187 then uh that's when uh, a large portion of the latino community started to vote and get registered and they all voted left so california has be- be- begun well, they, become- they all voted left as far as we know you know, the ones that are supposed to be here tend to vote right because they pay taxes and they also get sick of the high taxation rates. You know, they had how many fraud votes did they have down in your neck of the woods? In the yeah. In the, in but the, on, 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 on average, Republican, I mean, Latinos have never voted uh, over 50% Republican, ever. Uh, they'll, they'll always be, you know, you know they'll always vote primarily left. I mean, there are more, there are actually more Latino conservatives than there are black conservatives. But, you know, on average, uh, they tend to vote uh, uh, more liberal. And that's what happened after Proposition. After Proposition 187, you had two things happen. You had the riots, which uh, moved a lot of, uh, a lot of middle class conservative voters out of Los Angeles, and then you had Proposition 187, which basically uh, uh, galvanized the Latino community to register to vote. And now uh, California is a very large blue state, and it's a very leftist state. I don't know if you remember, but you had two Democrats, one moderate, I forget her name, but she was moderate, and then uh, uh, what the hell is her name? The other person, uh, I can't even remember her name, uh, Kamala Harris, who's a very liberal. And Kamala Harris won. The leftist won. I mean, California... Yeah, but, you know, once again, how many vote... What In the last election, they found how many millions of fraud votes down in L.A.? Yeah, what, but... 3.2 million? That's, yeah, that's I mean, a swing it, election. That may, yeah, but uh, yeah, you might be but right. Then, but then nobody gets unseated. Yeah. My thing is, I think California uh, is going to be a blue state for a while. I don't see I don't see things changing. I don't uh, know. And, I mean, they, they had a Republican make it through in the jungle primaries for the governor races. And um, once again, I mean, with all the fraud votes and things like that, if you were to eliminate that, and it was pretty pretty close, I think, in the governor races. Um, because people here are just sick of it. There's, if you walk anywhere in Sacramento, LA and all that, and if you were to just ask people, 
how they're doing without bringing in directly trying to bring in politics to it. They'll complain about things. They'll complain about the homeless population. They'll complain mm-hmm. about people going to the bathroom on the streets. They'll complain about taxes. They'll complain about housing prices. They'll complain about all the things that Democrats have controlled in this state for a long time now. And so I find it very hard to believe that real voters are going to actually continue to vote ultra left wing liberals. I think, but here's the thing liberals know. If they get past the election line, meaning it doesn't matter how many fraud votes are out there, how many people are voting when they shouldn't be voting, it doesn't matter because no one gets unseated. So they could find fraud votes all day long. No one's going to get unseated here. And I think they've pretty much figured that out. And this is how we've ended up uh, where we're at. The biggest fear that the Democrats have had in California was when Donald Trump um, threatened to send in the the census. And you have to wonder why they were so offended by that. It's because they're going to find out exactly how many people are here and supposed to be here. Yeah. Well, the one thing is, is that California has the largest number of, uh, of welfare recipients. And it's also, you know, a lot of people in the state uh, are on some form of government uh, assistance. And that's a lot of people that are. Uh, dependent on the, I mean, a large portion of the population are dependent on the state. And you're not going to vote. People don't ever vote against their own self interest. I mean, I remember. But, yeah, go on. ahead. You can live in San Rafael and make over $100,000 a year and qualify for housing assistance. I mean, so when you talk about, you know, getting government assistance, l- let's take into consideration what that actually means here. You know, you can make six figures and qualify for food stamps and housing assistance. So, yes. And, and how, you know. I mean, what, 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 what percent of the people are going to vote again? Because I remember when um, people were talking, like, this was years ago in the 90s, um, with my fa- when my father um, helped run with, a, when he was a little bit into Republican politics. And he said, you know, they were talking about, like, you know, limiting a little bit of uh, social security and uh they said you can't touch that issue people even if it's fair and right people are not going to vote against their their own interest Uh, um Mm, i mean yes and no um and but i mean you're right like uh, for instance i know someone who does really well knows a lot in taxes this year and he's a liberal and he went he came to me and he goes Man, I have a tax problem. Wham, 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 how am I gonna? Wham. Yeah, how am I gonna get out of it? And I go, isn't that the kettle, the the, the, the liberal tax kettle calling anyone uh, or saying anything about anyone? Yeah. It's the Jew you calling know, the kettle black. Yeah, and and you know sometimes when you are making money, you know once you start to make money, then you uh, you know you're more likely to become conservative. But uh, one of the things that uh, is kind of fair is kind of scary is more and more people getting on public assistance. When that when that number reaches a certain threshold, you know, with kind of like you know, I mean, like if we have the same number of people on public assistance as in California, that's gonna that's gonna make the nation lean pretty left. I'm just thinking. I mean, it, it 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 is and it isn't. You know, once again, you have people who are like ultra left and complaining about things. I just once again, I find it very hard to believe. And I I take the the realistic point of view to where if I walk outside and I go talk to people about things, you'll find that more people have um, the same ideas in common with you than your average little green haired <laughs> Marilyn Manson looking asshole downtown. Um, and they, you know, they're a minority. And then you have to wonder how that math adds up when it comes to elections and things like that. So I don't know. Um, I, you know, it, this, this is a hard one to tackle because I think as a society, we actually agree more than we think we do here. Um, but it's just, it, you know, there's a lot of political pushing and it kind of, you know, they, they, there's money in, in separating people. You know, and separating ideas, and that's and that's literally how people make their money in politics. So, you know, but, I don't know. But, but, 
but, but but also there are people that believe in what they believe in and like i said as as the nation becomes less white um it's going to become uh less conservative uh, um, when the demographics change i think uh, you know I, I don't know about that though i think it's a generational thing i don't think it has anything to do with uh, with really kind of anything else you know, I, I, I think I, I think I think generations tend to um, learn and react and do things. They pick what they don't like and do things differently than the generation before them. And um, you find that through history, that's a lot of that is, is the way things go. So, you know, what what seems to be today's news today, 10 years probably won't be the same. I think to a degree, people are stuck on politics the, the, the same way as they are with religion. They're born into a religion and a faith, and they don't, don't necessarily change. Uh, that, that's an old school way of thinking, though. No, you know, no, global, no. Global, global, globalization is a very, very real thing, and the world gets smaller every single day. Do you know what I was watching the other day? One of what? my favorite movies, Demolition Man. Great movie. Mm-hmm. Wesley Snipes. Oh, there yeah. Was a couple of great I, quotes in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I haven't seen it in so long. But I, I was watching Demolition Man and I was like, this is literally where we're at right now. We are so close to this point <laughs> of Taco Bell being a fancy restaurant and, you know, cry and be well and people getting tickets for swearing. And you know things like that, and like th- we are actually, I feel like very much on the verge. Can I tell of, you? Can I tell you a story at. today? Can I? Can I tell you yeah. a story of something that happened to me? Please do. I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. Oh, you so gotta hear this. You gotta so hear this, driving. man. This is bad timing. I'll wait till you I'm get driving. Back. And I'm gonna go to the bathroom at the same time. So yes. um, we're both gonna listen to your story, though. Okay, here right. we go. Okay. So uh, I get a call. Okay. Where's uh, my pee cup? Oh, good, good, perfect, perfect. You should be using the bags uh, that you have. Um, so I'm kind of a middleman for a lot of people. Right? So I get a lot of calls during the day. Uh, one of the calls is um, from a school, and it's the principal of the school. And um, I supervise um, a, a professional that's on his site. And he calls me, and he says... Um, he, t- you know, he says uh, he doesn't call me Jewish producer or JP, but uh, he says I want to talk to you about something that y- your uh, professional said today. And I said, okay, well, what what happened? He said, um, well, when when the kid arrived, the the kid that he works with arrived, uh, the the professional that uh, I supervise at his site said to the kid in front of uh, four um, educators in a classroom. He said, oh, hey, hey there, little devil. Hey there, little devil. And I said, um, you know, he didn't he didn't want to tell me what what the guy had said at first. He just told me that, you know, we had a problem uh, with your guy today. Uh, He said something uh, that was offensive and uh, some of the teachers caught wind of it. I said, oh, what did he say? And then so he went ahead and told me what he said. And so um, when he told me, uh, he said, uh, hey there, little devil. Um, I said, "Okay, well, yeah, but what did he say that was offensive? And uh, (laughs) he said, well, that was that was, you know, that was very offensive. Um, You know, I don't you know, I won't get into too much more detail, but basically was saying that. You can't have a professional on site saying, uh, calling a, a little uh, um, kid that's about to go into, a, a, you know, he's basically a middle schooler. Can't say, hey, what's up, little devil? Uh, I found, even I found, if he is. I found, and, and you know what? Let's, uh, I think part of the problem is he is. Part, I'll be honest. One of the, part of the problem is the kid is a little devil. Um, and that's the, but uh, I couldn't. Uh, I was a little torn. Um, now I wanted to hear uh, our guest uh, Liz's opinion of that. If if somebody said that to her kid, because uh, she, she has kids, uh, I'm curious what she thinks about this. Uh, 
I didn't find it offensive, although um, it's a public school. It's a public school, so there was no, um, you know, there shouldn't be any kind. I, you know, if it was said in jest, which it was, um, I don't see how that should be have, have been a problem. He, he really got in trouble for saying, "What's up, little devil." I don't know. That's a is that that's a real story. That is a real story that happened today. A principal from a school called me because I'm the go-to guy in this case um, in these kinds of matters throughout the district, and um, and and this actually happened to the, the principal said to me when I asked him what did he what did my guy say to you to the kid? He said he said hi there, little devil. When he walked into the classroom, and I said well. What was why was that a problem? And he said, "Well, there were four educators there, not all teachers, but educators, and um, they all happened to be female." And um, and he told me that they found it offensive. And I wanted to say, "You should have told them to grow some balls." I, I mean, I didn't know what to say to him. I just said I I, I would look into it further, but. I assure you, little devil's nowhere on any list that I have, <laughs> or nor have I ever seen. As far as uh, you know, I don't know. What, what do you think of that? It really happened. It's a real story. Well, are any of you aware of what's going on with the internet and internet censorship? First of all, I would have been hysterical if I would have been called because my son called someone right. a little devil. You want, I would be have been like, "Why am I here?" So um, this, I mean, the mouths on the, I just couldn't, and it's hard to give a, a true reaction to the story unless you have more background. Um, for a public school, I won't, I'm not going to name names, but for a public school, I've never seen more projects that have that were clearly faith based projects that the kids work on in class and, and during their classes so I, I i just can't help but think that maybe these th this particular school which is a public school um was protecting this kid from um you know a, 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 i don't know maybe it's because the devil has been portrayed on so many t uh, TV shows recently. He's in, well, he's I mean, so look at your many... apps and your games. Look at your uh, kid games. Yeah. Look at who you're dealing with. You got Bendy, right. which is like a kid's game, and they portrayed the devil. You got devil. Hello Neighbor. It, I mean, you have a lot of these, even apps on your phone. They all which have are devil. Kids games, which they like, talk about it. Every one of them. You have to be, yeah, I mean, you have to be, you have to be, like, careful in that because I kids you see this stuff. I yeah, they've numbed kids down on all of this stuff I, I and made them shocked. into funny cartoons to where a child that young um, probably didn't understand the gravity because they're not a, an, a, a developed adult. And um, and But the wor most worrisome thing about that is that this kid probably went on trial and are you and the school and all that and had no idea why. <laughs> you, know, you know, and thought he did something really wrong to where he it was probably very innocent and uh, yeah. nothing at all. You know, it happens so. all the time, I guess. But man, it, of all the problems I've ever had to deal with with adults through uh, infant, I should say seniors, maybe even lonely seniors that are expats, uh, all the way down to very, the most infant. Uh, that this was the most trivial thing I've ever had to deal with, ever. The, I was so mad. The worst, the worst one with a kid I've ever had to deal with. Um, my daughter has a friend, and she's eight, mm -hmm. and uh, she talks about cutting herself and <laughs> okay, all this kind of stuff. That's an issue, you know. It is an issue, right. and it's so much of an issue. Um, she gets a hold of her. They play these online games and stuff together, and she gets a hold of her, and then if my daughter doesn't get back to her on time. Um, you know, she starts freaking out like you're ignoring me and and things that are so beyond what should actually be the thought process of someone that age um, to where I didn't know what to do with it. Um, you know, she had my daughter pretty shooken up and I go, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. If I were an adult, I would know what to do or even a teenager, I would know what to do. But someone that young, I'm like, 
you know, who do I, what I essentially ended up doing at the end of the day was talking to the teacher about it. Um, cause you know, they're mandated reporters and they're, they're, they're trained to handle this kind of stuff. So, um, that's where uh, I pretty much left that at because I was so taken back that, that kind of language, it's- um, and thought and emotion was coming out of an eight year old. And then that I'm like, there's obviously something going on here. I'm, and I'm, I'm wondering if, be, if that me. could be, uh, the, the, maybe some kind of um, facilitator for all the censorship. And, and that is that language. I think children, even very young, at very young age, and younger and younger age, I should say, um, are realizing that a word is a word is a word. And I think parents, good parents, are telling their kids, look, you know, uh, a word is a word. I don't want you going out there and representing me by going out there and going, you know, fuck you or fuck this. However, you're going to come across a lot of videos on YouTube and they're all going to have the F word in it. Yeah. You're going to hear a lot of swearing. You're going to you're going to hear it everywhere in a lot of places that you couldn't used to hear it when we when I was a kid. And so right. I'm wondering if this is some kind of blowback and resentment and some kind of like you know we're gonna play God for a little bit, and we're gonna we're gonna play um, Daddy for a little bit, and tell you and instruct you uh, on what your child should not be. And, and it's not just children though; it's boiled over now to people to you know adults. And it's yeah, sick. it absolutely. Well, and, and, and I mean, I mean the, the the internet is going insane, insane as far as censorship is going. I don't know if you guys it's, have looked at the oh oh yeah. try. I don't. There I, were I, I searches. Don't, my sister try. My sister tried talking about the guys that um, came onto campus, you know, the adults that came on and beat up a black kid on Facebook, and Facebook stopped her from even posting what happened mm. and deleted her. And she goes, what did I do? Like, I, I didn't just tried to tell story. a story, and they, they straight up censored her uh, post and wouldn't let her post it. Wow. So, I mean, it's like, wow. Like, you know, that, that's pretty intense. You know, when it comes to you know, the the loss of innocence is definitely there, though, when it comes to the inner, younger generation and kids. And for children who are kind of, or certainly emotionally developing, there's a lot of information out there um, that they're taking in. And whatever emotions that they're feeling, they're relating to a whole world of information um, that they're getting from YouTube and things like that. So when it comes to censorship, I don't know. What do you do? What do you do? You know, it's well. Yeah. I mean, I think I, yeah, I think I, I think with this case, the government because if if banks uh, are also uh, like because one of the Proud Boys, one of the members of the Proud Boys, he also got um, he got like his bank he got debanked, and if that's happening, that I mean because. We, you know, banks are federally. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Back up, back yeah. up a step. Explain what happened. I, I did you get that list? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, okay, I know the story, but it, it didn't well, sound right. Well, what happened was, and I forget his name, but one of the members of the Proud Boys got, uh, you know, he was told he couldn't bank there anymore, and they basically they froze his account and they sent him Chase Bank. The, Chase way. Bank did that, and they sent him. Uh, like they just, you know, they, they, they froze his account and then they, they sent him a check in the mail. So he had to, uh, he had to wait to get his funds. So his funds were basically frozen. And the thing about it is, uh, these banks are federally insured and we also helped, you know, our tax dollars at times have helped bail out the banks and they're deciding, uh, you know who should uh, who should have a bank account and, and who shouldn't? That's outrageous. Hey, yeah, it's 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 just like Demolition Man, the movie. I'm sitting there watching that movie, going, "Wow, this is literally we are like two steps off of Demolition Man." Well, you know how many movies have there been that have told us this? Even Idiocracy, what is it called? Idiocracy, Idiocracy is a creep. Well, That's it's a great movie. Really it does the same thing, right? It, it it's, it's 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 really a social ju- it's SJW nineteen eighty four. People laughed uh, at it, but it, unfortunately, yeah, I mean, just a lot of I don't crime, even know. Like, I don't even know yeah. how much they were laughing at those movies. I think people actually did take those a little more serious than you know. <laughs> well, it's just weird to see it kind of come to fruition. You know, yeah. where you're like, literally, we are two steps off being ticketed for swearing. 
you know, they're having, they're going to censor our music. You know, if you remember from that movie, the only music that they had in the future from Demolition Man was the old cartoon um, or commercial tunes, um, like Hot Dogs, Armor Hot Dog. You know, and that's the only music they were allowed to listen to. Totally. Um, well, you know, you know what that... they got they got tickets for swearing, barbaric behavior. They couldn't right. even have sex or have you know, or ki- they had technology that would give them the feelings of having sex without actually having it. Um, and then you have to have a license to get pregnant. I mean, we are literally two steps off of that. I was watching this movie. I was like, oh my god, we're literally almost here. Because <laughs> I feel like that's. Well, what... well, I mean, it's a little bit different, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if, if you're white and conservative, you're 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 gravely restricted. There are things you cannot say or do, or you can be uh, greatly punished and stigmatized. Right. Well, I mean, and that's the thing with globalization and how world is small, or how small the world is becoming through globalization. This is what you're facing, whether your tax pot dollars uh, meant something or not, or what they pay for, is all of a sudden going to become irrelevant, and everyone's going to decide they want to become one big community, because the world's going to be very small, and it's only getting smaller, and um, all these arguments you have today, which are justified today, are not going to be justified tomorrow, even, because they're really pushing for globalization. Even with globalization... Uh, immigration, I mean, Japan does not allow for the types of immigration that we have. And Europe uh, is having forced immigration. Even if those uh, immigrants are a cultural fit, you know, and and now, I mean, of course... Uh, they've been, you know, you know, they, you know, only on the internet do they talk about the rapes that happened in Europe. Uh, uh, but now, like, since the the internet's been censoring, now that's going to be, that's not going to be told. Well, there is something to be said about not giving the bad guys attention. There are people out there that do things specifically for media attention. And so I know that they've been trying to curb that too. Now, where's the line drawn here? But, but, People should but, be aware no, 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 of the race, not, but you don't want to give the guy attention. But no, but uh-huh. but the thing is, they're not talking about like, uh, are these cultures, I mean, is, is about cultural compatibility. You can't even, like in Europe, I hear you can't even talk about that. You know, you can be arrested uh, or jailed for saying, you know what, these cultures are not necessarily compatible and they don't necessarily uh, respect uh, rights the same way, like women's rights the same way uh, they, what part our of culture Europe, does. Though, because they, they talk so so much shit in Europe about everyone else culturally well, and otherwise. I heard, I heard in England there were over 14, in, in Rotherham, England, there were over 1,400 rapes, and I don't know for how many years, but the police were less inclined to do it because they were Muslim youth, they were of Pakistani descent, Muslim youth, that were committing most of well, the rapes. Yeah, have you ever, okay, I have to ask this, have you ever been out there? In London, uh, well, or any of the surrounding I, I um, was actually, I, I was actually as, as a little baby, I was born in Germany. But you haven't uh, been out there recently. If you go out there recently, and say you were to just take a bus tour and go to, I don't know, like one of the convention centers and things like that. And you literally have to drive through what you know looks like little Afghanistan or Pakistan. I can see why law enforcement would be terrified because you go through a community. It's just like driving through Chinatown. As everyone looks at you, they wonder what you're doing here. You know what's going on. So I mean that that's a real thing. I agree with you. And that and that was that was one of the biggest reasons for Brexit was. The fact that they had, you know, that they had allowed so much immigration uh, to come in their nation to, to change their culture and to change the look of the place, and you know, most English people did not want that, and most American people don't want, uh, you know, most American people See, do not yeah. want the, the, the Southwest. The dynamics of the British, there are, there are, there are. Middle Eastern looking British people like um what's her, that Mindy chick's name anyway I mean that is a very common thing over there for people to be of Indian descent or Middle Eastern descent to actually be British and 
They've been there for a long time. The dynamics in, in the UK are very different than they are here. However, uh, they, but, are but the having, main, they are the facing this immigration of- issue that they don't like. And you'll find that most of the country, um, especially in England and Scotland, are um, swinging more conservative than they and are that, anything else. So they've been and, historically socialist. And, and that's, they, they really and that's the reason why. Because the majority of their city, I mean, the majority of London is not a uh, descendant of the British people. They're not ethnically British anymore. They, 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 they are their parents came from somewhere else. And the same thing with major cities in, in Germany. But, uh, but that's the thing. You're talking about a really long line of people to where generations of people who are Middle Eastern in, um, in, in nationality, are Brit- they walk around with British accents. Because their family's been there since God only knows how long. But are since, they culturally you know, British? Since, yeah, well, that's the thing. Since their their British ancestors uh, owned Muslim <laughs> slaves, they've been there. You know, I mean, because that was a thing at, at one point too. So you, had, you know, the the colonization of 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 England or Britain, you know, extended way beyond. And a lot of those people eventually did go live out in Britain, and so they are British. And we're talking hundreds of years back. So that that's not the, you know, like, like I've heard until recently, and I could be wrong on this, but until recently, there have been a large wave uh, of immigrants that has changed the ethnic makeup uh, of these countries, and most well, people don't want to be displaced. That's that's what I'm trying to tell you. Britain is its own melting pot of ethnicity because of number a where it's located, and b just the history of. Britain and the colonization that it's had on the effect on the rest of the world, you know. So that's all. That's already there. You'd be surprised how the many British, people there co- are not the British colony. The, the, the British clearly, colony does not. But the British colony does not exist. The same with the Ottoman Empire. Nobody. I mean, wh- why aren't these people going to Turkey who are part of the Ottoman Empire? I mean, you know, right, you have a you have a point there. But what I'm saying is that if you were to, if you, Mr. Minute, we were to walk into London and you were to talk to, let's say, 100 people, I mean, there's a solid makeup of people who are Middle Eastern, black, and white. And that's, con- mm-hmm. like, historically what makes up most of the UK because of, A, once again, their location, and B, the colonization where everyone's from. Now, you're not, ne- you're not wrong when it comes to... People coming in and the immigration problem that they have, and the British themselves, whether they're black, Middle Eastern, and white, I mean, the people who consider themselves British still have a problem with this, and they are coming in and taking over. It's the uh, how much you know, how much of a problem would I have if I walked down London with a sign that said uh, "Britain for the ethnically British"? How long I would I last? I don't know if you'd have much of a problem, from what I understand, because I still have lots of friends over there. Uh, most of them are swinging and voting conservative now because they've just fucking had it. You know, British want to be British. The color of the skin doesn't matter. The British, they just love being British. And they're sick of the influence on culture and how it's changing the way that everything goes for them. Um, they don't like it. So, Well, from what, I, from what I understand, the British, uh, like a lot of the, the, the civil rights industrial complex, has, the SJWs, have, uh, you know, they're in Britain too, and a lot of the people of color uh, there have taken on the SJ. Like, there's a politician by the name. Have you heard of Have you heard of David Lammy? No, but I, I will say this: through through being in Ireland and the UK, those people have always been there. As from the movie, they always have, and they're still a minority. But now, because of the internet and technology, they've been given a voice, and they're gonna portray themselves and project themselves to be bigger than they actually are but they're still the same size and they're still just as annoying and ignorant and nobody wants to run into them in a pub ever because they're terrible are you talking about the foreigners that are in britain i mean no, are just the, the, the sgws you know I, I you know it's it's super annoying to have to deal with them but once again well, the internet has given all these people a voice you, and, you, um, you know they're big and, and I, babies. Oh. And I don't mind them getting a voice because 
you know, because they and they were also part of the mainstream media, particularly when they when it was talking about civil rights. The one thing is, is the internet gave uh, it actually gave uh, alternative voices who were against the SJWs, and they were kicking the SJWs intellectual asses. And then all of a sudden, that's when censorship happened, uh, because the uh, the uh, the uh, the anti SJWs were putting up better arguments, and, and uh, they kind of knew this. And I think that they kind of got together with uh, with the um, you know the people who ran social media and said, "Oh, you got to kick these people out. This is all." white supremacy and this is all racism and it was all only going one way yeah i know it seems all too familiar like i don't know 70s and 80s except without the internet you know these things go in cycles did you know that the generation right underneath mine is supposed to be considerably conservative the uh my oldest son his generation and they do they show signs of like being there i mean these kids with a little bit of twist these are the kids that i swear to god would uh, bring on the next prohibition for alcohol, but legalize heroin because there's just too many people on it, you know. So, um, but but I mean, they're, they're, there's, you know, I, I feel like these things just come in waves, and uh, it's it's not the end of the world. But at the end of the day, I mean, you can't kind of deny the in, the inevitability as the world becomes a smaller place. Um, we are going to be much together. The dynamics 70 years from now will not be the dynamics um, that they are now. And who knows? You know, who, who really knows what's going to happen? There's a certain amount of it you're going to have to accept and a certain amount you damn don't have to ex- accept ever. Well, ho- yeah. hopefully we, we will continue with freedom of speech. Uh, I think that is the cornerstone of uh, uh, democracy uh, or, or a cornerstone of, of liberty uh, I don't think you can have a decent society without freedom of speech. Oh, no. And, no, you're going to start getting a ticket for spe- free speech, and then you're going to have to go around saying instead of goodbye, you're going to be like, be well. Well, I know. I don't, I, I, I don't think – see, I don't think it's going to be like that. I think actually what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of barbarity because th- the left, basically they support uh, – barbarity and social squalor and that's just going to be swept under the rug and if you do any reporting on it you'll get shut down immediately i i don't know about that that's the thing the generation right underneath mine i mean they're coming up and they're looking at all of us older and they go you guys are all nuts like this does not have to be this complicated you guys are all crazy and uh how about this you're not allowed to do this you're not allowed to be a dick there's a law you're done (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so you're not allowed. Very, very but there's strange. a law. You're not allowed to be a dick. I mean, the thing is, who who decides who's a dick? And like I said, I mean, and it's all about, uh, you know, like I said, the I, I don't because 41 percent of people do not allow for. Uh, I mean, uh, think that uh, there should be hate speech laws, and that would be horrible. Yeah, I mean, once again, I I don't know what the future has in, in store for any of us. All I'm saying is that. You know, I can see a probably very boring, dull future ahead, and uh, I, my robot I, I body would, will get launched into space one day, and I'll have a whole new adventure. I would me, prefer so. that than to the like. I mean, I would prefer that than to the soil and green uh, restricted hellhole that looks uh, ahead of us. I mean, I I, I think things. Uh, I you know, I I, I see America delving into a place of social squalor, barbarity, and just plain nastiness. I see uh, I, I don't. I, I see I see us trying to keep up with other countries who are have, have you ever so I was in New York I, 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 I see the future South Africa is, is America's future, but go ahead. I don't. I mean have you okay, so I was in New York recently and I was in Manhattan and I was in Brooklyn. And, you know, Brooklyn is all set up on, like, a solar grid. And then they have their Wi-Fi pods all around the street. And it's considerably clean out in Brooklyn now. Essentially, it was everything I didn't expect it to be. And the same thing with Manhattan. People were nice. Um, It was just not 
as the 1980s film that I thought New York would be by the time I got there. But, you know, I had gotten there, and, I mean, they're really pushing New York to be the future. And and as much as I see you Nor- New York being very unique to itself, um, which is great, I do see some lead there when it comes to kind of the rest of the country. So, I mean, I don't necessarily see um, the United States becoming barbaric in fighting. I do think that it will get rough, but I think the roughness will be very temporary, and the younger generations will will probably fix a lot of it. I so, see us, the way we're going now, uh, I, I see the possibility of us uh, being a balkanized country. We're going to be into hostile factions. That'd be very strange. I don't know. My robot body. I'll just go. I mean, go exploring in the space with our robot bodies. I'll upload to the cloud. Again. Uh, will they be face sitting on the, with a the robot body? Yeah, but they'll be robot face sitting all day long. Yeah, yes. All right. With that being said, JP, do you have anything to say before we close this out? No, I think we covered a lot of areas. Uh, yeah. We're pretty good. JP's making fun of us in the chat room right now. I can feel it. The, the chat room is off the hook tonight. Thank you all. I, I do appreciate. It. I don't. I don't know if that's the real Joe Brown. I think it's a, a knockoff, but still funny. They're, you said meth can work miracles, right? I think. I think at first um, there was some confusion about whether or not, or not meth was good or bad for you. <laughs> And no and God. now he seems to be settled on meth can work miracles. And, and, and by the way, I, I want to mention that someone has another show, uh, and and I, and, and I won't Daily. necessarily Debbie, give it a plug, Debbie but Daily. it's about what happened to real men. And I'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm definitely going over that show. So. I've been vocal to Liz. I've told you how I feel. I I don't like when people are separated, but. I get it in this case. I wish it was. I wish it wasn't so. And hey, I don't. I can't hold what? resentment towards you because I saw what happened. The day you came was the day she f- jumped the shark, and it's it's been downhill ever since. So what can you do? Well, you know, honestly, it's 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 been it's it's on a. I don't know. I don't really know what to tell you. When it's when it's good, it's good. When it's not, it's not. And right. um. You know, fuck, I wish everyone could kind of just be like that. I mean, we all have our moments of being however we are, panicky, chimping, whatever, manic, however you want to call it, um, whatever. You, you know, I think we're all kind of still, a, we're all friends at the end of the day, and um, we should be able to kind of get over that and coexist without having to make weird fucking threats on each other. All the time. In real life. You all know, the, all the time. You the, know, the and biggest it's just deception. like, ah, you know, shake it off and move on. But, um, no, you know, no. I'm, glad, I'm glad that we all are coming together again. The biggest know? deception so. to me was that I had her as a personal friend on my f- Facebook, and that, that was dumb. That was dumb of me. <laughs> I, I learned a lesson. Yeah, that was dumb I, of you. I never had to have my lesson learned online so hard as that. So there you go. Yeah, you're, you're I mean, I, I, once again, when it's good, it's good. And, and I am not I, sucking I, I up to at Liz. The I'm end telling of the her day, the truth. You know, once again, whether you win or lose a conversation, an argument, you're right, you're wrong. You know, everyone thinks they're right and wrong here. I, I really right. think that. What we should do is kind of just regroup and realize that, you know, this group really isn't going anywhere. Who the fuck are you kidding? Hang out. Could be an idiot. All of us. Bottom line is that, um, you know, one angry Jew um, just cannot maintain any relationships because of his behavior. And it's obviously a theme in his life. It's run him all the way across the world. Uh, uh, a way out of this country. My camping law was written for people like him, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, yes. no, literally. And he's actually the outlier to that. You know, and with all with all the sins of everyone in the podcast Breaker community, with all the sins of everyone combined, you know, there's still a welcome party for most of us. Um, and right. he is really the, exclu- the, the exclusion because totally. he can't totally. go five minutes. Not even a chance. No, I know. 
everybody else, you know, kind of comes and goes, and it works, it doesn't work, but it's still being worked out. But there's, but not him. No, <laughs> no, not him. He just and, wants uh, to come in the chat room and hang out on the other side of the internet. V for vindictive. V yeah. for vindictive. Yeah, and he's actually not the worst one. Well, he's the worst one solo. You know, you got a group over there that's trying to create chaos that, honestly, I think that Internet Somalia, we were the um, Internet Somalia. Oh, Evan's a little was, girl. Um, you know what? Yeah, the, the, we, you know, they were, they were the original chaos troll creators. So people who are trying to kind of start problem now or continue with the drama now they're they're terrible at it number they, one they missed the but boat number right? two, like <laughs> we've seen it before yeah. we, we do you know everyone here's done it themselves like get over it nobody fucking cares about you so <laughs> like, old nobody, boring news. nobody gives preschool. a shit yeah. nobody gives a welcome shit welcome to internet preschooling turmoil. yeah you're not very good at it so i apologize to ruthie for this show there was a little more language than normal but I'm sorry, Ruthie, especially at the end. I'm sorry, no, I'll never no, do it again. I did, it was me. I set the... Tr- no, it was me. I, I bro- v for vindictive. Yeah, I started <laughs> I started this show early on with bad language. I, I take it all back. Mm-hmm. Let's all go back I'm to I'm sorry, the- Ruthie. I love you. I'll never do it again. Let's so. make uh, 80s movies again. That, that's yes. right. Someone's got that sharp dildo for V for vindictive. <laughs> that's me. He's ready to shove it far, far, far. And obviously most of them are completely improbable. Oh, no. Not the vindictive dildo, just the dildo. That's yes. Should we play some music or we? Uh, do you have anything else to say? Nothing more to say. Let's play us out. Liz? No, I'm you. good. I love you guys. Thank you so much for having me on. It was great. Very nice Always to a have pleasure. you. Always a pleasure. Blog Talk and the best show on the internet. Nobody Glad you're back I from New York. Nobody tackles Me too. Oh my like God. Well, actually, hold on a second here. No, I, I wish you were still in New York uh, telling us more stories. I, I, I've only been there once, and I, I love it. I loved, I loved, I did the same I, thing you did. I stayed in Manhattan, but spent time in Brooklyn. Yeah, I am. Um, well, like it's spoken like a true Jew. Uh, have we not ended this show yet? Be over. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I got back into it. Okay, okay, we're in. Well, we're talking about New York and stuff. No one wants to hear your fucking New York stories. New York is wonderful. You're going to examine all these facts. Shut up. Nobody tackles this. Like a blood attorney. Nobody wants to hear it. Criminals. Okay, Stephen Colbert. 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 Stephen